library friends, it's me, Miss Kathy, here at the Maumelle Library, part of the Central Arkansas Library System. Today, we have a really silly story time. We have been talking about all kinds of tales at the library, but today we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about butts. First, we have to get some of our silly wiggles out. You ready? All right. So stamp your feet and clap your hands and stamp your feet and clap your hands. Can you do them both together? And nod your head and wiggle your bum and nod your head and wiggle your bum and nod your head and wiggle your bum and stamp your feet and clap your hands and nod your head and wiggle your bum and stamp your feet and clap your hands and nod your head and wiggle your bum and sit back down. In that rhyme, they called people's bottoms their bums. Let's see what some different names for animal bottoms are in this book. It's called Chicken Cheeks. Oh, there's his bottom, Chicken Cheeks. It's written by Michael Ian Smith. And their pictures are by Kevin Hawks. On the book flap, it says, this is a story with a beginning, a middle, and a whole lot of ends. Chicken Cheeks. Hmm. Wonder what he's looking at up there. Duck tail. Moose, caboose. Chicken cheeks. Penguin patootie. Polar bear derriere. Turkey tushy. New wazoo. Flamingo Fanny Rhinoceros Rump Giraffe Back Half Hound Dog Heine Toucan can. Kangaroo keister. Guinea pig buns. Deer rear. Duck billed platypus gluteus maximus. Oh, I see what they were getting up here. Can you tell what that is? Some honey. Oh, that's why all those animals were stacked up in that big tower. They were trying to get some honey. Bumblebee bum. Mm -hmm. 
the ends. There's the bottoms of all the animals. I think the bumblebees win. What do you think? In this beautiful book, the animals brag about their bottoms. It's written and illustrated by Maki Saito. And the rabbit says, look at my bottom. My bottom is such a round bottom and so cute, don't you think? Well, who's this, Hippo? I have a round bottom too. So round and so big. That's pretty big. My bottom's even bigger, so much bigger. Look how big. That is a big elephant bottom. Look at our bottoms, they're covered in stripes. Stripes of all kinds. Don't our bottoms look stylish? What about my bottom? Is it patterned like the rest of me? Our bottoms are white, black, and Black and white. Our bottoms are the same color as our faces. Did our faces copy our bottoms? Or did our bottoms copy our faces? Line up, line up. Heart-shaped bottoms all in a row. Our bottoms are fluffy bottoms. Even when it's cold, we stay warm. Our bottoms are tough bottoms. When something bangs against them, it doesn't bother us at all. Our bottoms are spiky bottoms. They're amazing too, don't you think? Everyone's proud of their bottoms. Such wonderful bottoms, each and every one. Let's take a little break where we move around a little bit. When I say tops, I need you to stand up and go tops. And when I say bottom, I need you to scrunch way down and touch the floor with your hands. So tops and bottoms. Ready? Tops. And bottoms, tops, and bottoms, and move round and round and round. Oh, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, move round and round and round. Oh, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, move round and round and come down to sit on your bottom. Here's a little game I like to play called Who's Butt? It's by Stan Takiella. Let's 
see if you can help me figure out whose butt. There's Stan, the person who made this book. It's the photographer. He says, I love taking pictures of animals, but it's not always easy. Sometimes the animals run or fly away. When this happens, I only get pictures of their butts. But can you name the animals I tried to take the pictures of? This may look like an ordinary animal butt, but watch what happens when it dashes away. Whose butt is this? That's right, it's a deer. Oh my goodness, look what happens to its butt. When a white-tailed deer senses danger, its tail shoots up in the air, boing! The white on the underside of a deer's tail is like a warning flag. It tells the other deer that danger is near. So run, run away, Clue, quick. With a long shaggy tail, it looks like a dog's butt, but you wouldn't want to pet this behind. Whose butt is this? It's a wolf. Yeah, don't pet his behind. No, don't do that. A gray wolf can communicate with its tail. To tell other wolves that it's the leader of the pack, a wolf holds its tail up high. When it's frightened, a wolf puts its tail between its legs and an excited wolf might wag its tail. See, that reminds me of what dogs do sometimes. There's a funny shaped tail on this butt, but you'll be surprised what a flat tail can do. Whose butt is this? Do you have a guess? It's a beaver. An American beaver has a wide flat tail that makes it wobble when it walks, but its tail is very helpful. It uses it to steer while swimming. Also, one slap of its tail on the water, whack, will let the other beavers know that danger is near. It's white and fluffy like a bunny's butt, but this rump can run incredibly fast. Whose butt is this? I thought it was gonna be another kind of rabbit. It's a pronghorn. Pronghorns are the fastest land mammals in North America. They can zip across the prairie at 70 miles per hour. That's as fast as a car. Vroom. If you glimpse one of these speedsters, you may only see its fluffy white behind as it races away. This critter raised the tail on its butt, but don't get close to find out why. Whose butt is this? It's a skunk. The striped skunk has a stinky way of protecting itself. When it feels threatened, a skunk will spin around and raise its tail. Other animals had better stay away or they'll get sprayed. A skunk shoots a smelly, oily substance out of its rear. Phew! This critter may have a cute fuzzy butt, but it's part of a powerful digging machine. Whose butt is this? I don't know. I can't figure that one out. I don't think I've seen one of those before. What is it? Oh, I have seen one before. It's a badger. Rowley and snarly American badgers have short, powerful legs. Their bodies are built for burrowing. 
When they dig a hole, you'll quickly see their rumps disappearing behind a pile of dirt. Badgers spend more time underground than above. Yeah, stay away from badgers. They have big claws and they are mean. This animal likes to show off its butt, but there's a reason it shakes its tail feathers. Whose butt is this? It's a grouse. Dusky grouse have plain looking tail feathers, but when they fan out their tails, wow. A boy grouse struts about and dances. He shakes his tail feathers to show off for the girl grouse. That sure is a large and fuzzy butt, but all that fur is useful when it's cold. Whose butt is this? It's a bear. Ah, he's got a bear butt. <laughs> a black bear is covered in fur from its head to its rump. A bear's soft underfur keeps it warm during cold months. Its rough outer fur protects the bear from bug bites. A bear's fur also repels water. After a dunk in a river, a bear shakes like a dog to dry off. These animals have striped tails on their butts, but what are these critters looking for? Whose butts are these? You might have seen some of these. They're raccoons. Northern raccoons are nocturnal, meaning they come out mostly at night. They have dark masks across their faces and dark rings around their tails. These markings help them hide in the shadows at night as they look for food. Oh, that's what they were looking for. This tiny critter has a twitchy butt, but there's a reason it flutters about. Whose butt is this? It's a chickadee. Black capped chickadees' twitchy tails help them dart about as they feed. During winter, small birds like chickadees struggle to stay warm, so they need to be quick when searching for food. Zip, food gives them the energy to stay warm. And here are all the animal facts about all the animals we looked at in this book. I hope you enjoyed playing Who's Butt? If you like stories about butts, boy, are you in luck. The library has a lot of them. Here are just a few. Always lots of heinies at the zoo. The sequel to Who's Butt? Who's Baby Butt? And the classic, Butts. This portion of the story time has been brought to you by, how many times can we get Miss Kathy to say the word butts? Chicken butt, oh, there it did it again. This is by Erica S. Pearl and it's illustrated by Henry Cole. You know what? What? Chicken butt! You know why? Why? Chicken butt! You know how? How? Oh. 
chicken eyebrow. You know who? Who? Chicken tattoo. You know where? Where? Chicken underwear. You know when? When? Chicken butt again. You know what for? Enough. No more. Well, you know what now? No way, no how. Okay, you know what? It better not be you know what. It's not chicken butt. Okay then, what? Uh, <laughs> chicken butt? Now wait just a second. Chicken butt! Didn't I just tell you not to? Chicken butt, 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 chicken butt. Uh-oh, I think that was one chicken butt too many. It's gotta go for a timeout. Hey, you know what? Not again. It's not chicken butt. Are you sure? Sure. Promise? Promise. Okay. Okay, you know what? What? You know what? What? You know what? What? Monkey butt, monkey butt, monkey butt. And if you enjoy chicken butt, you might also like chicken butts back. I'm afraid that's all the butts we have time for in this story time. If you like to stay tuned, you can learn how to make a chicken butt craft. In the meantime, we have to say goodbye. And this is how we do it. Wave hi. Hi. Wave low. I think it's time. We gotta go. Wave your elbows. Wave your toes. Wave your tongue. La, 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 la. Wave your nose, wave your knees, wave your lips, blow a kiss with fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair, wave your belly, wave your derriere, wave your chin, wave your eyes, wave your hands and say, Goodbye. Bye. Here's a craft I'm guessing you've never made before. It's a greeting card featuring a chicken butt. And it's a pop-up. Here's what you'll need to complete the craft. If you want, you can come to the Maumelle Public Library. And while supplies last, you can pick up a grab-and-go bag with the instructions and supplies or you might have some of these things at home already. You're going to need some white paper circles and a smaller white circle and a piece of heavier construction paper or cardstock to make the card and some different colors of paper or if you only have white paper, you can use some markers or crayons to color things the colors that you want. But I'm using some orange and some green and some red. You'll also need some scissors and a glue stick and something to write with. So first, we need to make a greeting card. And you do that by just folding this in half. Next, you take our white circles and you fold them in half. 
They kind of look like tacos, don't they? So there's a couple things you need to notice. One is that this smaller white circle, we left that alone. That's gonna be the chicken's head. All these taco pieces, they're gonna be the feathers on the chicken's behind. And if you noticed me refolding, I did that so if I had any pen or pencil marks where I cut, that's gonna be on the outside of the taco, like that, okay? Next, you need to get your glue or your glue stick and just on one of the outside parts, you put the glue. So then we'll take our next one and you have to be careful so that you're lining them up on the fold really carefully. Okay, so if we went like this, it's gonna open up kind of like a book. And then we'll get our next one. And line that up on top. Our next one. And line that up on top. So remember, you got to keep these folded parts all together and all in a row, and you got to keep the open part all on the same side, all open. Now we've got our nice fluffy chicken butt. It's poofy on that side and it's flat on that side. And where it's flat, we need to glue it. We're gonna open our card and where this fold is, that has to line up. We're gonna make sure we're not gluing the pieces together. Because we want when this opens up, that it's all nice and fluffy like a pop-up. Okay, next I have a chicken's head and he's gonna be looking away from us. So this is the back of the chicken and this is the back of the chicken's head looking away from us. And we're gonna give our chicken some wings. Mine kind of look like hearts with flat parts on them. Or kind of really lumpy loaves of bread or teeth. <laughs> but these are kind of the backs of the chicken's wings. Also going to put this red part. It's called the comb of the chicken. It goes on top of the chicken's head. And I did kind of a little triangle out of the orange paper so it can be its beak. We 
I'm going to give our chicken some grass to stand on. And we're going to give our chicken two orange heart-shaped feet. Remember I said if you don't have these colors, you can just get some white paper and color on it. And then we're going to use a pen or a marker or crayons and draw his little feet on there. Or her little feet, I guess. All that's left is to put our messages on our card. So I made these kind of cloud looking or kind of bubble looking talking bubbles and on the front it's like one person's over here saying guess what And then the other person is going from the other side and that person saying, what? And you open it on the inside and the first person says, chicken butt. Guess what? What? And you open it up and it says, chicken butt. Burp, burp. And that is how you make a chicken butt card.